up to his name as a dirt track dominator. He has dominated all the events so far this year and leads in the points. Right behind him, second in the points, another Bloomquist race car campaigned by Jimmy Owens. And yes, they're chasing the four-time champ. They'll also get some help in chasing that four-time champ from some of the best Converge on Lawrenceburg, and this week it is a 50 lap main event. It's next. Stay with us. Welcome to Lawrence. Diamond Fire Technology. It is game time, baby. We're down to the final eight events of the 2009 season. This is the 33rd event of the season of the previous 32. 20 different winners out of 488 different drivers. But when it comes to the championship, you have to talk about Scott Bloomquist. He's still looking for his first win of the season, but he does own the points lead. He has a 70% win ratio at tracks he's never been to before, and he's never been to this one. The guy right behind him, how about the four-time champ, Earl Pearson Jr.? He's third in the points, and we can't forget about Jimmy Owens. Second in the points starts on the inside of the sixth row. He's got his work cut out for him. But Rob Supper, there's also a local favorite here that wants another win. You're absolutely right, Ken Stout. He has a couple wins here at this racetrack, but not with the Lucas Oil late model. We're talking about this guy right here, the number 83, the Silver Shark, Scott James. He grew up in Lawrenceburg. This year he has one win. Two top fives and four top tens. It's been an up and down season for the Shark, but he said earlier today if he can win in front of his hometown crowd, it would certainly put a cap on the 2009 season as we are closing in. Just seven more races to go after tonight's event. Hey, any of these guys can win. A lot of money for grabs and Dave Argerbright. One of the big dogs is starting deep in the field. Dale McDowell is fourth in Lucas Oil points, but tonight here in Lawrenceburg, he lines up all the way back in 18th position. 50 laps seems like a long time when you talk about a race, but for Dale, if he doesn't want to lose any ground in the point race, he has to go forward right away. That 17M is absolutely one of the cars we are going to watch in this 50 lap race. Let's take a look at these points we were talking about, courtesy of Super Clean. And yeah, there's still a little bit of time, but they're going to have to get after it here pretty quick. Well, two wins in the last three events, and Jimmy Owens now in second place, 215 points behind the Dirt Track Dominator. You see the four-time champ, Earl Pearson Jr., still hanging around in that third spot. But tonight, we are going 50 laps here at Lawrenceburg. It's going to be fun. Enough of us talking about the points. Our Dave Argerbright's been very busy out there today. He caught up with some of the drivers and asked them how they felt like they could catch Scott here in this point spot. Now we're going to have Hope he runs a little worse than we do. Is it uh, something that enters into it, the strategy, that does it change when you're trying to chase a guy? I uh, dirt race. You go out there and run the best you can and hope you run better than they, they do, do, I guess. <laughs> Tough. Um, what I really need is Scott to fall out one or two races. Um, Jimmy Owens got 100, and I don't know, 50, 60 points on me now. Um, the only thing we can do is go out there, qualify best we can, run good in the heat race, and you know, finish, win the feature, or, or at least finish in the top three. That's all we can do. Well, I think all of us have to find more consistency. Uh, that guy's been awfully consistent this year. You know, he, so far in the year, this year he has no wins, but he's got, uh, he should have had some wins. So uh, uh, the rest of us have had some wins, and we've had our bad nights, and he hasn't had quite, well, I think he's had one or two, you know, what we consider bad nights, and other than that, he's been awfully consistent. So I think each and every one of us have got to work on that package before we can get up there and race with him for the points championship. Yeah. Well, I, I haven't looked at the points all year. They tell us where we're at or stuff, but I mean, it's, you know, if you're good, the points of fault come with it, you know, so. You know, last month or so, we've been running real good, and you don't give a couple big races away. Hopefully, you know, we can end this thing on a good note and get some big races. Well, let's take a look at the Lawrenceburg Speedway. Three-eighths mile, very high big dirt oval, about a mile and a half west of 275, just across the border from Cincinnati, Ohio. It's been around since 1950, but Dave Rudisell, the promoter, this racetrack. They changed this track a few years ago, and it's the second visit for the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series, and it's going to be a great night of racing.
Earlier today, Dave Argerbright caught up with a former NHRA Nitro Funny Card champ, also has spent some time in a midget, and earlier this month won his first dirt late model race. The Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series continues to grow in popularity, and evidence of that is the net many different faces that we see from other disciplines that come over here to race with NHRA superstar making his Lucas Oil Late Model Series debut. First of all, I'm excited to see you here, Cruz, and I know you're excited too because I know how much but you love dirt track racing. Yeah, you know, I discovered these cars uh, a couple years ago when, when Stuart and the guys invited me to the Prelude, and I thought, man, these cars, they're, they're incredible. They, they have the speed, the power, the beauty, and uh, I've been to old 10 or so races since uh, last year's Prelude. How big a learning curve is there when you jump into these cars? Huge learning curve. You know, I've driven sprint cars and midgets. Those cars are, are difficult as it is, but these cars, I think, are a little more difficult because the rear end moves in them, and, uh, but the principles are the same. The laws of gravity, you know, you still have to go where, where the moisture is, and, and uh, but these cars definitely, uh, uh, they have a lot more going on with the suspension, so you really have to be, you have to know what the car does when you're on the throttle versus off the throttle, so I would say that's probably the single most important thing to learn, which is why I'm out here running, uh, running my my, uh, my rear off, so I can get, so I can get where I can uh, where I halfway know what I'm doing. So the priorities tonight, I assume, are one, have fun, two, make the feature, and three, actually learn some things. Exactly. You know, and I'm actually uh, getting to where I'm more comfortable. Uh, uh, one of the strategies was for me to have my own car, so I can I can actually have the seat where I want and the steering wheel. So you know, it's a rocket chassis here, and and I'm getting help from some of the guys. Tim McCready's helping me with the setup, and Mark Richards and some of the guys. So I'm actually. and B, uh, make sure I point in the right direction. Yeah, when you're used to racing that takes three or four seconds, a 20-minute feature is going to be interesting. We wish you well. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, race backs. We have eight races left in the season. $10,000 is up for grabs tonight, a 50-lap main event, 44 entries process. Congratulations to Brad Neat, who set fast time at 14.098. Here's some more race information. Yeah, we had four heat races, 10 laps each. The top four made it directly into the show. We had two B main events, 12 laps in distance, and the top three made it into the big 50 lapper here tonight at the Burge. All right, let's show you some highlights from heat race number one. Right off the bat, it would be Earl Pearson Jr. up there on the pole. He, Matt Miller, and Brad Neat. Oh, putting on a show here. Yeah, you can see the track very tacky, very fast, especially through the corners is that left front coming up on the 44, but a, a three-car breakaway there with Miller out in front. Then you'd have Earl Pearson Jr. second, and Brad Neat running right behind him in third. Brad Neat with some success here this year, hanging out up there with the big dogs. Of course, it's all about getting a good starting position in that A main. The top four will advance, including those three guys leading the pack. And Matt Miller, a couple car length advantage over Earl Pearson Jr., of course, running that low line as Miller right through the middle of the racetrack. But again, a very tacky, very wet racetrack here tonight at Lawrenceburg Speedway. After heat race number one, it was the seven. Matt Miller picking up the win. Earl Pearson Jr., second. Brad Neat, Terry Casey, Mr. Excitement, and Shannon Babb rounding out your top five. You see John Mason down in there, Freddie Smith, Justin Radlett, some pretty big names down there at the bottom of the pack that went to the B main. By the way, John Mason and Chris Wall just freshly, heavily fine for chemically altered tires. Not a good thing. All right, when we come back, we'll show you some highlights from the rest of the heat races. And then, of course, the 50-lap main event is on tap. Stay with us. Want better engine performance? Want better gas mileage? Do you want to save money? Try look. It cleans your engine as you drive. It helps your fuel burn more thoroughly for increased performance and mileage. It also lubricates the upper cylinders. Lucas Fuel Treatment. It works. So you got both those things for five bucks? Five bucks. How about five bucks? No way. Every day on Quiznos New Choose 2 menu, get two big Quiznos dishes for just five dollars. Like an Alpine Chicken Sammy and a bowl of broccoli cheese soup. are the building blocks of a perfect girls weekend. It all starts with having more hotels to choose from. That's why I book with Expedia, so I can find someplace familiar or somewhere more distinctive. Nice. Then I can compare dates to find out when I can save the most cash. Done and done. We should do this.
this more often. More choices, more savings. Where you book matters. Expedia.com. I'm here with Troy Paul and Malu. Tell us about the goal line stand. Well, I owe my gray hair to head and shoulders. It's for more than just dandruff. That's not what I asked, Troy. Isn't it? No. Isn't it? Yes. Head and shoulders. Seven benefits, one bottle. Speed in high definition. Where racing is crystal clear. And our original series are vivid and packed with adrenaline. We're gonna get this party started. Speed in HD, taking your senses into the center of the action. Ratchet up the experience with Speed HD. The Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series is brought to you by Silver 
Trevor Shark doing a great job out here. Knows this place very, very well. A very emotional driver. And up to this point, very fast. Of course, this track will change drastically between the heat races and the main event here this evening. The 54 car back in there in the hunt as well in this fourth heat race. Brandon Kinzer and John Blankenship. John Blankenship hanging in there for Rookie of the Year status. And he will also go to the main event. So Scott James picks up the win. Brian Burkhoff for second. Brandon Kinzer and a Rookie of the Year contender, John Blankenship, round out your field. When we come back, we'll bring you B-Main number one. The first of two B-Mains. And, of course, we'll fill in the gaps here for the A-Main. Stay with us.
maybe these better races coming up here in the fall will help us out. All right, we're going to break, but we'll be right back with the second of two B mains, and then of course our 50 lap main event is coming up. Stay with us. Service for a dollar seventy a month with Magic Jack. That's just 
$19.95 a year. $19.95 a year. We give you free local and long distance and your own phone number. Replace your phone company or add a second line with Magic Check. It's National Football Month and is a proud sponsor of the NFL. Papa John's wants you to watch the season's best games with a better pizza. Papa's <laughs> in the house. Y'all watching the game? Good. Right now, taste John's favorite pizza. A large six cheese with delicious sausage and pepperoni. Only $9.99 and only at Papa John's. Best Best pizza. Pizza. Oh, John. Well, let me bring it back. Yeah, boy, I right, we're home. This month on Fox Movie Channel's Life After Film School, John Landau, producer of the 20th Century Fox film Avatar. The goal of any narrative story is to immerse the audience in the story you're telling. There's nothing more immersive than a few years here. Only on Fox Movie Channel. When you need to ship one pallet or more, one call is all you need. Available inside delivery and free liftgate service. Quality people with speed and reliability. Coverage from coast to coast in the U.S. and Canada. Plus the best customer service in the industry. RNL Carriers, a carrier you can count on. Welcome back to the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. The A main competitors are lined up following the pace truck here in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Weather all around us, by the way. Here, look at the seven car of Matt Miller. Chief Van Warmer on the outside looking to win his first ever Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. Ray Cook, of course, the Hall of Famer, gets in on a provisional. Brad Neat, your fast time. Said a little bit earlier today, we'll go on board with those competitors as well as they go four wide. Yeah, we often talk about the most beautiful sight in all of motorsports, and uh, once again, here it is, the four wide salute for all the great race fans coming out to Lawrenceburg Speedway. Now, the second time this series has been at this awesome racetrack, and the fans are going to be treated to an awesome E3 Spark Plugs Lawrenceburg 50. They ran a feature here one year ago and this year they added 10 we'll go 50. Everybody loves to watch these guys go four wide and I'll tell you man given the opportunity they're not afraid to race at least three wide. Jimmy Owen starting 22nd entered this event second in the points. Boy does he have his work cut out for him. Talked about Dale McDowell as well. We'll take a look at our K&N starting grid. Matt Miller, Jeep Van Warmer we know but right behind him Scott Blue Scott James, Earl Pearson Jr., and Zach Dome. We move back to a row at number four, Eddie Carrier Jr. in the 28 on the inside. Berkey, Brian Burkhoffer on the outside. Of course, Brad Neat, Don O'Neill in row five. The O Show, Jimmy Owens and Brandon Kinzer. A long way to go from row number six. Let's go back to row seven. We find Terry Casey and Mr. Smooth Billy Moyer. Row eight, Ricky Arms, John Blankenship running for Rookie of the Year. Shannon Babb and Dale McDowell coming out of the B main. Mike Marler and Steve Casebolt in row number 10. Donnie Moran, Eric Jacobson again deep in row number 11. Ray Cook and Dan Schlieper round out your field taking provisionals in row number 12. So those guys uh, a long way to go and just 50 laps to get there. A big field, some of the best in the business. And it will be Mr. Miller who crosses the start finish line first. The Lucas Oil start of the race. Let's listen.
It's gonna 
slick off in the left rear is always going to be in the slicks. You're going to get a lot of heat built up. We could see some tires blister if they continue to run that outside part of the racetrack. Car pulling off the track down there at the bottom. I think Berkey's a little quicker than me, but just has not found a way around. Maybe he's found one now. <laughs> oh, Brian Burkhofer. Very low on the racetrack, trying to get under Brad Neat, who is just as low. You see Neat kind of pushes up there, coming out of turn three and four. He'll push up and kind of open up the door, and then right there.
track. So, again, kudos to the track prep crew here. Dave Rudisell and the boys have done a great job once again here at the Bird. Look at that face mask, baby. It looks like all the care outs are gone. Not a good thing out here when you're dirt track racing. Brad Neaton, the 41, again, the battle for eight. Don O'Neill and Dale McDowell. Dale McDowell, fourth in the points. Don O'Neill, fifth in the points. Yeah, that's what it's all about here at this point. Uh, and, and obviously with this championship on the line, Scott Bloop was trying to stay out of trouble. Eddie Carrier Jr. with a good combination inside of this car here tonight. Pounding around there at the top five. Scott Bloop was leaning on him hard, but that's what Scott's MO has been all year long as a top five car. Yeah, no win, 17 top fives, 24 top tens, and he's got a 215-point lead over Jimmy Owens. That's how you win titles. Battle for the fourth spot. Keep an eye on Berkey. Brian Burkhofer, very low on the racetrack. We don't normally see Burkhofer run that bottom line, but right now it seems like his car is the best down low. And if you look at the track, it looks like there's a lot of grip down low just yet, and if your car is set up to run down there, it could be a great place to pick up some ground. And Burkhofer winning the Diamond Nationals this year. He won the Show Me 100, also picking up a win in Pontoon Beach at the Tri-City Speedway. So, yeah, three under his belt here. Been a great year for him. Has won some huge events along the way, including the Diamond Nationals. So just past the halfway point, you can see working lap number 27 in Berkey. Underneath Bloomquist, that's for the fifth spot. Yeah, he's just slowly picking away there, just inch by inch. And it looks like he'll claim the spot for now. Just past the halfway mark of the 50 lap main event, Brian Burkhofer. driver doesn't rattle doesn't make mistakes Matt Miller in the seventh car and of course the silver shark right behind him a native from the Lawrenceburg the 83 of Scott James that is the battle for the second spot Matt Miller finished 12th last year here at Lawrenceburg out of Waterville Ohio former Jackson 100 winner knows his way around the dirt lane model racetrack yeah 2008 and 2000 Eldora track champion. I mean, that says a lot. Some tough competition up there. Former Jackson 100 winner. And he's got six Lucas Oil wins to his credit, trying to make number seven. But you can see that's the battle for second. We don't see Chief Ben Warmer. He's almost got that thing in overdrive. He's got about a half a straightaway advantage. So a nose to tail battle for second and a nose to tail battle. Four spot is now we go up front. There is Van Warmer in the 55. You just gotta wonder is he able to take care of his tires? I mean, if he's out there in the front like that, can he drive a nice, straight, smooth line and take care of those tires? He's gonna need them here for the last 15 laps of this event. Yeah, a little bit deeper in the pack there. Again, Brad Neat down low in the 41. Billy Moyer in the 21. Del McDowell again still on that top shelf for the eighth position. You mentioned it before, starting off 18th of Heat Man. That is a solid run out here tonight. This is a very, very tough field. Some really big names out of here. And he's pretty much committed himself to the outside part of the racetrack. He went up top, decided to stay up there, and it's working for him as it looks like the caution will oh, come out. Not a good thing for Chief Van Warmer. That will tighten everybody back up. So a tough break for him. It looks like Eric Jacobson was the reason for the caution flag, who is still going at this point. So Chief Van Warmer will take him immediately off the Christmas card list. Well, it yeah. looks like the 80 shirt. Sure, yeah. yeah, Scott James there. So not good for the driver that was running in third spot. We're hearing over the Lucas Oil radios a vibration on the 83, so he could be done for the night. Tough break for the local boy. Typically something in the drive line. There's your general tire. Top five, Chief Van Warmer still leading the group. Excellent job for him. He has just a few laps yet to go. And he can lay claim to them. $1,000 in his first ever Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series win. The final lap of the 50 lap main event are coming up. Today, tune in as Kevin Harvick, Clint Boyer, Ron Hornaday, and others face their toughest interviewers, the fans. NASCAR 2010 Live from Daytona. Covers continues today at Brixton. NASCAR on speed. Be there. So you got both those things for five bucks? Five bucks. Can I borrow five bucks? No way. Every day on Quiznos New Choose Two Men, you can get two big Quiznos tastes for just five dollars. Like an Alpine chicken Sammy and a bowl of broccoli cheese soup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Choose two for five. We now offer phone service for a dollar seventy a month with Magic Jack. That's just nineteen ninety-five a year. Nineteen ninety-five a year. We give you free local and long distance and your own phone number. Replace your phone company or add a second line with Magic Jack. Okay. I work for a different insurance company. My auto policy is just going to be a little 
too expensive. With Progress, you get the name your price option, so we build a policy to fit your budget. Ah, uh, price gun. <laughs> Wish we had this. We just told people what to pay. Yeah, we're the only ones that do. I love your insurance. Bill. Tom. Hey, it's an office party. The freedom to name your price, only from Progressive. Call or click today. And as a Progressive customer, you get to use any of our concierge claim centers. So I can just drop off my car and you'll take care of everything? Yeah, even the rental. What if I'm stuck at the office? If you can't come to us, we'll come to you in one of our immediate response vehicles. What if Mother won't let me drive? Then you probably wouldn't have had an accident in the first place. And we're walking! And we're walking! Making it all a bit easier. Now that's progressive. Call or click today. Welcome back to the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. We're competing here for $10,000 at Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Lawrenceburg Speedway presented by Avery Spark Plugs and John Blankenship with some issues. Yeah, Rookie of the Year contender. John Blankenship slows on the back straight away. We'll see if he stays out on the racetrack or if he heads back to the pit area. Looks like they gave the field one to go, so we won't go green this time by. And it looks like Blankenship's going to stay out. Bring him back around. Chief Van Warmer has been the leader for the entire event, but here comes Berkey down there on the bottom. Eddie Carrier Jr. right there in the middle. Three wide, and Van Miller hangs onto the spot. Ryan Burkhofer from outside row number four now trying to go three wide. Check that, take it over second. Gets by Eddie Carrier Jr., gets by Matt Miller, or does he? It is so hard to be that controlled when you're on the bottom because you want to drive it in a little bit deeper to get Control. Well, the 28 of any carrier gets hung out to dry right through the slick part of the racetrack in three and four, the middle of the racetrack. Now Matt Miller right back around the 15 feet, will retake second. Great battle going on here for second place. Jeep Van Warmer is trying to hold on, baby. About 12 laps left to go. Yeah, if he had a rear view mirror, he wouldn't be looking in it because he's going to try and run away from these guys. They go side by side every single lap. That could allow Van Warmer to pull away that much further. One more time, we're going to say it. No radio. No spotters here, so and he just has to go by the seat of his pants. Right now, all he has to do is just go, oh, Matt Miller jumps the cushion way up high. That'll cost him a spot. Yeah, just that easy. We talked about it when Scott James did it. You get up over that cushion. You get into the loose stuff. It takes a little bit to get back on the racetrack, and he loses a little ground, falls from second back to third, but here comes Brian Burkhoff for nine laps to go. Can he run down G. Van Warmer? Boy, there's a lot of real estate between he and G. Van Warmer with less than 10 laps to go. I don't know, man. Berkey's got a long ways to go. Pro power underneath the hood. Schlieper giving him a good power plant, but man, Van Warmer is way out there. Here comes Bloomquist now. Yeah, Bloomquist originally started third, fell back early in the race, and the top line has come into that Team Zero car, and he is moving forward. Eddie Carrier Jr. looking real good down there, trying to hang on to the spot as well. Bloomquist really Tinkered with that cushion, man, but that car seems to go forward every now and again, and it doesn't upset it as much. Matt Miller now trying to reel in Brian Burkhofer once again, the battle for second. Next time around, we'll have five laps to go as Van Warmer again. Got one leg up on the dash on cruise control. Man, I gotta tell you, it looks like they are closing the gap here a little bit on Van Warmer. I don't know if they'll be able to catch up with it. Here comes Matt Miller as he gets the spot back. Man, what a race here for second, and they are Definitely reeling in Van Warmer. Five laps to go. And Miller bouncing off the back wall, coming off turn number two. And he has got that thing backed in sprint car style and turns three and four and gets back around Burkhofer. Van Warmer's saying, hold on, baby, hold on. <laughs> he 
Live coverage begins Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern, only on speed. The automobile is different as the people that drive it. But as unique and important to each, they only need one automatic transmission fluid. Lucas. Lucas multi-vehicle automatic transmission fluid was developed to enhance transmission performance and longevity on a wide variety of vehicles in a world that is so complex. With Lucas multi-vehicle ATF, it's nice to know that taking care of your car doesn't have to be. Available at AutoZone and other quality automotive parts retailers nationwide. If you're looking for the inside track on a Ford and other types of insurance, ride with the General. We can help you cut the cost of insurance with a down payment as low as $59 and a low monthly payment that will take the pressure off your budget. Log on to thegeneral.com now for an instant quote and immediate proof of insurance. Don't end up with a loser. Ride with a winner.
The obvious thought, though, Brian, could you have gotten cheap without the trouble that he had? Was there a hope of trying to get a late pass in on him? Well, it, it, it was weird. It, the longer the green went, the better I got after the restarts. My tires didn't feel very good. Then we'd get going a little bit, and I got better and better and better, which was kind of weird being on the tires I was. But, hey, it worked out. You know, obviously, you got to take them any way they come. You know, Jeep and Matt drove their tail off as well as everybody else did. Uh, we just had a good car. We could stick on the bottom really good. Like I said, the restarts were a little lax there a little bit, and I just kind of kept plugging away. And, I mean, it was a lot of fun, and, it, you know, it's been a long time. I don't even know if I passed somebody on the last lap to win, so <laughs> what a race. First four-time series winner of 09. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thanks. Boy, a picture of disappointment, Jeep. What happened there in the late stages? Got a little bit tight in the corner, and we had to bend the car a little bit too much. And I think we we're scrubbing too much speed off right in the center, and uh, just made one mistake. And you can't make mistakes with these guys out here. And, uh, you know, it just goes to show you that uh, you need to lead uh, lap 40, not lap 1 through 39. You know, when you when you talk about this, I know you're disappointed, but is it encouraging to come out here and run so well against these guys? Yeah, definitely it is. I mean, these guys are tough. Uh, you know, I feel like we, we can be as competitive as any of them on any given night. You know, but usually they're they're competitive every night. Yeah, we're just bummed out, you know. Yeah, you want to win so bad, and, um, you know, I guess it wasn't our night. Uh, we congratulate you conducting yourself well. You'll get them next time. Thank you. Matt Miller, hard fought in third place. This was a difficult track in many ways tonight. Would you agree? Oh, yeah, definitely. That cushion was kind of brutal. It was slick to it, and it got worse and worse and worse. And, uh, you know, I just, I, I was way too tight to be up there, but on the other hand, I wasn't good enough to run through the hub and all that stuff with Jeep, so kind of had to settle in there, and hopefully we got traffic and they take advantage, but uh, I just got tighter and tighter and tighter, and he just kind of drove, pinched his way away, and then we got to battle there with uh, Brian, and actually had to pick up the pace there, <laughs> drove back to Jeep, and that's where I got in trouble. I was way too tight and overdrove a little bit, got up a cushion, and uh, Brian got by, and then uh, Jeep got, had the same fate, he jumped cushion, and then Brian stood by him. All right, your super clean point standings have Scott Lucas, of course, up front. Jimmy Owens loses about 20 points.